church. Um, firstly, let me say thank you to the leadership of the church uh, for this uh, wonderful opportunity for us to do this short interview. Um, it's always been a pleasure to speak to Louise, but we've never spoken in this context that we're going to speak about. So I'm quite privileged to be in this position. So thank you very much once again for agreeing to be part of this interview, Louise. Um, taking back, why Rose Act? Why was it so important for you to get involved? Um, do you want the whole hours version or just a... A summary, please. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I volunteered to teach in Tanzania. Um, hurt my back and had to come to South Africa. And when I got to South Africa, I didn't know what I was going to do and felt God saying he wanted me to stay here. And I'm saying, no, 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 because Australians go, you know, they don't go that way. <laughs> South Africans go to Australia. In case you're unsure if I'm Australian, I'm Australian. Um, so I felt that God wanted me to stay here. And I was here for a year without a job and looking at volunteering at different places. I joined the Bible, uh, Bible College here, the Rosebank Bible College. And then Pat King and a couple of other people came and saw an advert for Rose Act and said to me, you should apply for this. And I said, great, and I applied. And it was because I've been a teacher for over 40 years. Um, it was like an ideal spot. And I'd been teaching in Tanzania and felt that you know, the poor were really where I wanted to go. And now working in Alex in a whole new community was just going to be an amazing opportunity. So that's where I started. Fantastic. Um, I like the fact that this is how we can always pinpoint where, when God is involved. Because when you hurt your back, you didn't think that during that uh, time, this would lead you to being part of this magnificent <laughs> organization. So that's how God works. Um, as Brett has said, you've been part of a Rays of Hope, a Rose Act for 16 years. What has motivated you to keep going over all these years? Um, I would say relationships. Um, relationships with people in Alex, primarily with the children. Um, children, I mean, I, I love children, but the children in Alex are so keen to learn, so, so eager to have relationships. Um, you know, I've developed relationships from 2003 that I still see those kids now. You know, I've been to their weddings. I've been to, to unfortunately, to the, some of the funerals. Um, just, yeah, relationship. Um, and then just not with the children, wonderful people that I work with, um, the Trish and the Sandy and, and Sikhle now, just amazing people, godly people. And, yeah, you can't help but want to work there. And the church. I mean, an amazing church. Ever since I came here, it feels like you've, you've adopted this Australian as yours. Um, and, yeah, and Rose Act has been yours as well. So when I look around and I think, there's not that many people that I can't see that haven't been part of Rose Act in some way. It's been amazing. And we want to thank you for your contributions over the years. Give yourselves a round of applause for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, you mentioned relationships, and, and, that, and that is so key. The few times that I had the privilege to go and work with you um, during the Saturdays, and the, the young people that you work with call you mother. And for me, that was quite um, touching to witness, because you're not just a teacher, you're not just this woman that comes every weekend to them. You are a mother. And I hope you continue that as you go to your next journey that God is going to be taking you on. Um, over the past 16 years, what has been your highlights? What have been your lowlights? Those moments that stand out immediately, those moments when things were not going well. If you break it down between what were uh, the, the, your greatest achievements and those challenging times, what would you say? Hmm. Um, I sort of said that a bit okay. already. Um, the, the highlights were Saturdays, yeah. really. Um, I think seeing children grow in confidence, seeing children grow in um, not necessarily even academic ability, because once that is helped, then their confidence is built. Um, but children who are too shy that now come up and, and participate, um, children who would not come to me at all, who now hug me. Um, I don't know about so much about the mother, because now it's a go-go, um, <laughs> which I don't like as much. but. The tiny worries me altogether. Yeah, not having that. Um, so, yeah, so the positives and um, the negatives. Um, 
there's a couple. Um, one of my main ones is that I come from a quite a well-established um, place in Australia. This is a well-established place. The schools are well-established. They have, ex they have um, resources that the Alex children just do not have. They don't have the experiences that the other kids have, that your kids have. I just, my heart breaks for that. Can I just grab that bottle of water? Would you of course, mind of course. grabbing that for me? Sorry, I've talked too much. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the, the, the downside for me is, is seeing that. Um, you know, there's no playgrounds at the schools. The schools have 70, 60 kids in a classroom. They're packed like sardines. The teachers don't have a chance to, to get to know kids' names. I was like that in Tanzania, 70 children in a class. And I mean, it was, it was heartbreaking. Um, and then we expect these children to finish their matric and to compete with all of the people that have had all the experiences in ex C schools. They can't. It's, it's comparing you know, apples and oranges. It's, just, it's not fair on them. And yet so many of them really take it on board and they, they, they just perform so well. And I think Rose Act has been an amazing platform for a lot of those students who would go the extra mile. I mean, I went and visited one child in matric, and there's five people living in one shack, all sleeping on the one bed, and she had to study outside on a rock. So she did her homework outside in matric, you know, and, and she passed, and she did well. You know, and I think those are the exciting things for me, but to feel like they have to do that. It's not fair, you know, and I know I saw that in Tanzania, but I didn't expect to see it here. So I really hope that that improves here. Um, yeah. And the last question is, what does the future hold for Louise? Hmm. Um, it's, it's kind of a bittersweet one. Um, I'm very sad to be leaving, although I've had a year of goodbyes. So I've known at the beginning of the year I've been leaving, so I've been able to say this is my last holiday club, this is my last camp. And that's helped me sort of not get to the end of the year and, and collapse in a heap. Um, and I'm realising God has other plans now, that this is an end of a season. Um, and we've got a lovely person to take over from me that I've got confidence in and, and will take Rosac in good places. And then for me, I've got to go back to Australia. I can't afford to, to keep living here. And I always thought that I would live here till I die. So unless I die in July, then I mean in December, <laughs> then um, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Um, but so I'll go back to Australia. I'm hoping to, to um, work with Aboriginal children there. Um, and I never could have done that if I hadn't come and worked here. Um, because of the experience I've had here, of what I've learnt here, of the support I've had here, I can go back and make a difference there. Um, it's how I feel. Amen. One more time, let's give a round of applause. Um, Louise, on be behalf of the church, on behalf of Rays of Hope, um, the Bible speaks of, in Matthew 5, it says, be the salt and the light of the earth. And in the months that I've known you, you personify that verse. And may the good Lord continue to pour into your cup that it overflows with his blessings. May he set you on fire so that whoever comes to you may see the love of Christ it, that burns within you. So we love you. We appreciate you. You have raised the bar. Now it is up to us and those that will come after you um, to raise the bar to the standard. You have touched many lives. You have touched my life personally in the seven months that I've known you. You are an incredible, incredible person. You, are, you personify the Christ-like image that Christ speaks of. So once again, thank you. One more time, let's put our hands together for Louise. Thank you so much, Louise. You've been great. Louise Cameron, you are a legend. And let's, let's give thanks for this life, 16 years of ministry among us. And as you retire from this ministry and God still uses you back in Australia, let's bring you before the Lord. Father, I just want to thank you so much for Louise. I just thank you for the legacy that she has left 
in the lives of so many children over 16 years. Lord, we thank you for the stories that we've heard um, throughout these years of children whose lives have been changed. Lord, we thank you for her faith that each year as she's had to find so many different tutors to tutor children on Saturday mornings that you have always provided. I thank you for the privilege that has been ours as a church to provide some of those tutors and for those even here this morning, Lord, who have served you maybe a year, two, two years, three years, some longer, some shorter, but have all got to experience Louise. Lord, I thank you for what I've seen in her life, not only of firm discipline for the children in order to get things done, but yet at the same time, Lord, you've given her the personality to just shower love and somehow she gets that healthy tension right between good, strong discipline and just deep love for the children. And Lord, we just thank you for how you've used her and for the hole that she's going to leave behind. We thank you for providing a replacement. And we really just pray, Lord, for your blessing and your strength to go before her, that as she returns home to Australia after all these years, that you'd help her to settle in, and that, Lord, in this new opportunity, that you would just go before her and bless her, Lord, in the same way that you've blessed her here. So we just pray, Lord, for the ongoing multiplication of her life and the legacy that she's left, that those whose lives she has touched would in turn touch the lives of others. And we just lovingly commit her to you now as we pray this in your name. Amen.